Hi, my name is Dan Johnson. I'm the State Water Management Engineer with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service here in Davis, California. And today in this segment, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, soil moisture monitoring and, and, uh, and to have the help answer your question of can soil moisture monitoring actually save you water. And what we'll talk today is essentially just an introduction. Uh, there's a lot, of more, a, lot more, a lot of detail that's involved with this, but I think with this introduction, perhaps presented in a different way, it can help you make that decision to see if it's right for you. As a farmer, you make decisions about when to irrigate and how much to apply. To apply. Of course, then that is irrigation scheduling. And in times of drought is when you take a closer look at that, uh, those decisions to see if there's, a, is there, if there's an opportunity uh, to squeeze a bit more water out of your water supply to spread it farther with, amongst your crops. As you make those decisions on irrigation scheduling, there's a lot of things you have to consider. Uh, it's, it's not a simple task. That you, you're, it's a juggling act as a farm operation with making irrigation decisions. And it's, so it's, it's stage of growth, it's available of water supply, availability of labor, and limitations of the irrigation system. All you have to consider when you make those decisions as far as when to irrigate. So the more information you have, uh, you can make better decisions in that regard. And that information needs to be good. We're, soil water information or data, as we're, as we're all be talking about it, uh, can help you identify risks in regards to what's, by looking at what's actually happening in the soil. Now let's take a look at this for, real quickly for a second. Specifically with crop stress, uh, what you're doing when you irrigate, you're, you're, it's a balance between um, how much stress can you risk taking with the crop in, in regards to its impact on crop production, and against the potential water loss if you over apply. And since one of the major benefits we see of monitoring soil moisture is you're able to look below the soil surface and actually see what's going on to help better, make better decisions. And the second part is regards to feedback. Once you do make irrigation decisions and you do apply an amount of water, you can see you actually track where that water is gone to see if it's met your objective of, of essentially going into the root zone and not losing it to deep percolation, essentially resulting in a water loss. As you look at the, the soil, uh, you know, typically most farmers are very familiar with and comfortable with looking at the soil root zone in regards to uh, having a qualitative uh, method of saying how wet is my soil? Is the soil wet enough? Is it, is it dry enough to irrigate? And so forth. But what we're talking about today is uh, taking the next step or, if, or taking the leap, if you will, going from a kind of a, a qualitative standpoint of assessing your moisture to a quantitative. Uh, because we feel with, with more with qualitative quantitative information, you can actually do some math and calculations and come up with specific amounts of water to apply and make those kind of decisions. But it's difficult to look at a soil profile and, and to have the, the conversation about the value of soil moisture monitoring. Uh, with monitoring, uh, uh, the information comes to you in the form of data. It's, it's irrigation amounts it's, uh, or it's uh, soil moisture content. And the way we'll describe it is, is graphically, it's very common. So in this case, we have a, uh, a time span or uh, of uh, time across the bottom. The y-axis essentially is a water content. Uh, we've I specifically made the, the, the scale or the description of the water content is just simply wet or dry. Depending on what type of methods you use to, to measure soil water content uh, will dictate, will tell what type of uh, how you describe water in the soil, whether it be centibars of tension, uh, as some devices uh, provide information, percent water volume, or, or directly as inches of water in the soil. So let's, let's go through an irrigation. Uh, say on, so on June 1st, um, you've, you have irrigated or just finished, or uh, June 14th, you've just finished an irrigation, and as the soil, uh, the crop removes water from the soil, the soil dries down and it continues uh, day after day. And finally, after about the third or fourth day, uh, you've made a decision to time to irrigate. So you, may, you apply that irrigation, and then the, res the, soil res the results in the soil is increased in water content for the average for the root zone. And of course, this is a, dis a conscious decision you made um, in regards to how much to apply. And as you continue on, uh, the crop continues to remove water, and it continues to be room of water, and you make a decision, okay, it's time to irrigate again, and you apply, in this situation, uh, approximately the same amount of water. 
and then the cycle continues. And so this is nothing new. This happens in all irrigated agriculture. Uh, in some crops or some irrigation methods, this, the, the, the highs and lows on this graph will be very shallow, such as if you're frequently, frequently, frequently irrigating, such as with micro-irrigation or subsurface drip irrigation. In contrast, if you're a surface irrigator, and with uh, furrow, such as furrow irrigation, you probably would only irrigate maybe every seven to 14 days, so the extremes and water fluctuation is, is significant. So as you look at this graph, you say, okay, so what? There's the, sun, the water, the soil dries out, it gets wet again from irrigation, and the, a cycle continues. But, so the next question is, okay, so what? And that's what I wanna talk about next. One of the first management principles, as I'll call it, um, is, is something you're very well aware of, is, is don't irrigate until it's dry enough. And uh, you always strive to do this on your own. But what we'll suggest here is actually to pick a target, uh, uh, to select a, a target dryness that uh, can be in the form of water depletion, water content, or tension, so as I described earlier on the graph. But essentially you uh, come up with a process to decide what is my target number and actually give it a number. So looking back at our graph, uh, we would set up, establish a, a, essentially it's a target line. You know, once we, we go through the process of deciding what is the best, what is the appropriate water content, uh, you'll, that'll be uh, something that you shoot for in the future as you, as you plan irrigation events. Uh, this allowable dryness uh, could be uh, indicated by your irrigation system. If you allow your, your soil to dry out too much and you have a low volume irrigation system, you may have a lot of diff quick difficulty in catching up as far as refilling the root zone. Uh, very commonly, however, it's, it's a tied to which how dry do you want the plants to get. Uh, the more stress or the, the, more, the drier the soil, the higher the potential for yield reduction. So farmers uh, are always conscious of that. So it's, it's relatively common. The second principle is, uh, is don't apply more water than the soil can hold. And this is something that uh, uh, we want to emphasize that uh, maybe has not been uh, pay quite much attention to, but uh, we want to draw attention to it. Because again, it's another target line. It's something else to shoot for or answers the question of so what um, when you look at monitoring soil moisture. So essentially at this point, you're determining how much water the root zone can hold before it leaks. And your folks are familiar with uh, the, the key idea that the water can only, the soil can only hold so much water. Uh, you start an irrigation event, the soil fills up, and at some point, if you continue to add water, it drops out the bottom. Uh, and of course, out the bottom of the root zone, this is why we're here. This is where we're concerned with drought. Uh, if this water is uncontrolled, this amount is uncontrolled, it's water loss that could be spent, used someplace else on your, on your property. So the next, so field capacity. Field capacity is, a, is as level uh, in soil, as a property of the soil. Um, and, and which beyond uh, a water content beyond field capacity is subject to, to leaving, th passing through the soil and out, out of the bottom of the root zone. So what's the upper limit? It's, it's, uh, it's the point at which that uh, the water, the soil, the root zone can no longer hold water as you're filling it up. So it's a, it's a, it's a key point in your operation. Third principle uh, is uh, to measure how much you're applying. And uh, if, you, if you measure how much you're applying, you can compare it to how much or what the response was in the soil. So this management tool essentially is, uh, again, to you, you know you apply so many inches of water and then you get a corresponding change or increase in water content of the soil. And with those two pieces of information, you can make a decision, did I apply too little or too much? So again, it's just a simply tracking mechanism uh, for a comparison so you can essentially so you can self-evaluate irrigation event after irrigation event. So let's take a look. We have the, these are our graphic here. We have our key pieces of information. We have our, our, our uh, wet line or such our field capacity. We have our uh, trigger, trigger line of what is it dry enough to irrigate. And we have our information in regard that, that tracks uh, day by day our soil water content as well as how much water we've applied each event. So where do we get this information? 
Well, for water content, uh, it could be as simple and as basic as systematically taking uh, augering or probing for, for soil samples and feeling the water content. And NRCS has a tool we use that based on appearance and soil texture and how wet your, the appearance of your, the wetness in your, so, in your hand, you can actually assign a number to it for, for dryness or, or wetness, if you will. And so it's essentially uh, day after day, you can essentially gather the data to plot your points for, for your graphic if you choose to use graphics to illustrate water content of the soil. Probably most popular, however, these days is the use of some type of device. Um, you've seen small uh, uh, electrical resist resistance type of devices, and you've seen capacitance and other types of probes and so forth that you install in the soil that will actually sense water content or tension in the soil. Uh, and to provide feedback to you. So they're very common and you've probably heard a lot about them. Uh, the other that you probably have, may have heard about is uh, the, essentially the use of climate-based systems. Uh, uh, the, probably the most well-known in California is our California Irrigation Management Information System in which it actually models based on weather conditions and predicts how much, how much water is used. And then you apply a coefficient for your crop and from that, you can estimate water use and in the turn apply it to soil properties to indicate, again, soil water change with time. So it's more of an indirect method, but it's, uh, it is a method uh, to, to, to monitor soil moisture, but indirectly. And finally, uh, with all this data and information, uh, it's got to be processed. It's got to be processed and it's got to be in a form that's usable to you. It doesn't have to be on a computer. It can be as simple as a, uh, a chart or a table that you, you take regular readings and, and plot it for yourself, or you can put it, the information in a spreadsheet. Uh, but again, more folks these days are tuning to go to automation where the information is going to, to a data logger and services are provided to be able to see moisture information uh, at convenience, convenience of your own home. And finally, uh, again, to get the uh, to record the amount of water that's applied, we have, uh, we recommend soil moisture meters. Um, with soil moisture meters, where you, you actually measure the amount of water applied to each irrigation, uh, you can very accurately um, keep track of water applications. Alternatively, it's very common for farmers to, to know their irrigation system application rate and simply track the, the hours of runtime. And that's fine. Uh, however, we do recommend that, some, that you also have a meter because what happens with irrigation systems is that over time, the flow rate will change due to system wear and, and plugging and clogging, that type of things. So the, so the accuracy of your application volumes will degrade. So again, we encourage flow measuring devices. So finally, so management principle four, and that's essentially, it's essentially try, uh, strive to keep uh, your irrigation events between the lines. So what we mean by that is that you've already established at a, as a strategy, you know, how dry are you going to allow your soil to get uh, through this period, time period? And by the way, that, that the allowable dryness or how long dry you allow it to get before you irrigate might change with time. You may decide that during a certain growth stage of the crop that you actually want to stress it. So you'll act, you will actually lower this line to, uh, to encourage a, a drier condition within the root zone uh, say to encourage uh, solids accumulation in plants such as tomatoes, um, uh, sugar content control in wine grapes and so forth. So it's a very common practice. But secondly, you, you have already established your fuel capacity line. So between those two, you have, set, you have set your targets. So as we move ahead with an example, let's say you irrigate, uh, have irrigated maybe prior to June 14th and the soil dries down, it continues to dry down day after day. It reaches near the allowable dryness, and you say, that's close enough for me, I'm gonna apply an irrigation. And the amount of that irrigation uh, could be by trial and error based on your past experience with how the soil responded, or it could be, depending on your moisture monitoring equipment, you may actually uh, be able to calculate directly how, how much water has been removed, and you simply replace that much, and of course account for inefficiencies and the need for salt leaching and so forth. So in this example, you apply an irrigation, and uh, in this situation, this example is taking you above field capacity, so you're going to anticipate a little bit of deep percolation, and then you continue, continue on with drying cycles, 
And in this case, you would like to irrigate at, to, at your allowable depletion, depletion mark or your dryness, uh, but your system's broke down, so you have to wait another day. So you wait another day, and, and, you, and you see the impact of waiting another day as being, oh, you know, it's probably not significant, or you make that judgment call. And at point, that point, you irrigate, and because you can see from your graphics or your, your data that you've actually well, you have used extra water, you can calculate how much extra water you pr would need to apply to uh, refill the root zone to your desired content. And of course, the result shows that in this case that they did just about that. So it was a pretty good call on how much water they applied this irrigation event. So they continue on, crop removes soil, uh, water, and it, as it approaches the allowable dryness, you decide that I'm gonna catch it this time, Here's, I apply an irrigation. This irrigation event, uh, you know you're trying to get back on track in regards to taking advantage of, of time of use charges with your utility company in regards to pumping cost. So you've actually cut down your uh, run time on your pump on your well for irrigation time to try to stay, to keep pumping costs down. So when you look at the result of that, you'll see that that run time actually took you pretty close to what your target might be as far as wetness in the soil. So with the information that you had from your graphic or your soil moisture data, you're able to decide that you can look back and say, okay, I made a good call on that irrigation decision. So finally, or as we move on, um, it's, as we, the example we've been looking at so far has essentially has had the appearance of being just one soil water content through the root zone, when in fact it was an illustration of maybe average conditions. What's most uh, useful is to have a series of soil moisture, moisture devices at various depths. Uh, and the reason being, your root zone will, it's act, the root zone activity will vary with depth. So in this situation, or this example, we'll say we have it at 12 inches, we see that the water content through, an, through irrigation, wetting and drying cycles is significant. There's there significant swings, which makes sense because that's where the active root zone probably is. How, and then as you look down to the 30 inch line, uh, the red line, uh, it doesn't move as much, which is what you would expect and probably look for in regards to manage, managing your soil moisture. And finally, with your device installed at the 40 inch, inch, 48 inch depth, you see that there's just a slight trend uh, through this irrigation period or time where it's drying out. And so you, again, with that information, you can make a judgment call, is that okay? And from a water conservation standpoint, uh, that's actually not bad, a strategy. That this indicates that you're not getting deep percolation because the, the soil at that 48 inch depth is not responding to irrigation. So the roots above that and the wetting above that is taking care of it. So con in the contrast, if you see that it's drying out and if you know you have salinity problems or saline water, this lack of deep percolation uh, may be attributing to, to salt salinization of the root zone. So again, it's, it provides feedback to let you know if you need to take some further action, whether to reduce the amount of water you apply or to start planning on a leaching to remove excess salts. So did we answer the question? So how can monitoring my moisture save me water? And uh, so it's, you know, with having, having information, having established some, some uh, numeric lines of, of wet, uh, wetness and dryness, if you will, and then having the data, you can track what's happening in your root zone. And from that, you can evaluate your own irrigation decisions and make adjustments. In this case, in regards to saving water, uh, we, we had a couple of opportunities here where we exceeded fuel capacity by some amount. So if you watch those and try to minimize those, uh, you'll, and especially during time of drought, you can minimize the amount of deep percolation losses, a water that's no longer available to you. Second example, and this is kind of a stretch, but uh, there you've been reading about, maybe heard about different strategies to essentially re reduce the, the amount of water that the plants use. And that's, uh, of course, has to be done carefully and systematically. Uh, some, some crops, they, they've uh, discovered that you can actually under irrigate, if you will, especially during key times in the development process with, with minimal impact on yields. Uh, and with that information, uh, you can uh, adjust your irrigation strategy in, strategy, in this case, reducing the overall average soil water content 
lower than typical, and in which case you're actually reducing evapotranspiration or reducing the amount of water the plant actually uses. And in, in such that, wa that water is saved that you can use elsewhere. So in closing, uh, systematic soil moisture monitoring, it's the, the, a couple of key things. Uh, first, it, you're able to confirm that the water that you applied goes where you intended it to go. Uh, without soil moisture monitoring, by some means, you're not sure. Uh, you, again, based on good experience, past experience, um, you've probably had, uh, felt, had good success based on the measurement of yields of how production has worked, but you're not quite sure uh, if the, how much has, you, has gone below the root zone in prior. So with devices, equipment, by some means, uh, you can monitor how much you may possibly could have lost below the root zone. And secondly, from a crop production standpoint, the, the plants, the crop actually responds to soil moisture. So the more you know about soil moisture and how it changes with time and how you can control it by knowing its status, uh, you can actually optimize, optimize crop production, whether it be to intentionally stress to increase some qua uh, another crop quality or to intentionally stress to minimize the, the amount of water that crop, crops actually, actually use. So I hope, hope this was valuable to you. If you have any more information, you are certainly welcome to contact the Natural Resources Conservation Service or the University and Farm Advisors. Thank you.